Good afternoon. We have Minister Angela Brown from Joshua and Caleb Ministries, Inc. We're here just to hear the word today. We're not in the service, but we are. Um, so we're just going to just open up in prayer. I know we're ready to hear the word for today. And uh, I'm just going to pray. Father, we thank you. We give you our praise, honor, and glory. We thank you that you, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Jesus, just for being with us at this time, Father, knowing and believing and trusting in you, knowing, Father, that you have us, that in these times that we are in, that we can always look to you. So we thank you and we give you all praise, honor, and glory. We thank you, Jesus, that you have given us everything at this time that we need to pertain to life and godliness. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are and who you made us to be. We thank you as we're in this time, that Father, that we have our faith totally and trusting in you. We thank you for the word that's going forward today. And I pray that everyone is blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. And now here is Pastor Diamond Brown. I don't know if you did a whole introduction and everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we never did, I never did this home thing before. So this is like really weird for me. If you're like bugging out with all the toys you see behind you, we're in my home office. And yes, I have a full collection of DC action figures from many different um, sets. I'm thinking, uh, People say, well, you know, into Marvel. Well, I started collecting DC before Marvel really got into figures. And yeah, I like DC better. So what? Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, I have like over 700 plus figures. Um, in many cases, they're all around my office here at home. So it is what it is. Um, so I want to do this a little, if I seem a little awkward because it's the first time doing it. But um, we're close at service today because they made it a law that you can't have church service. Um, not not pooping on it, on them, you know, but the word tells us to be, you know, running under Caesar what Caesar's and to be obedient to the um, governing laws. So we close. Other than that, we would be open. Um, but I decided to, um, I prayed about what to talk about and I felt led to go back to Matthew 12 and talk about the power of Christ. And that would be the title of the message. This is not a full exhaustive version of the power of Christ, but just the kind to just to lay out for us who we are again in him yes. and what his word says about our role in the earth just by watching his life. So I'm just going to get forward, go forward with that. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 12 and um, I'm going to start from verse 24, I believe it is um, 24, 25. Let um, me see me get my pan together okay so that's 22 we're going to start at 22 all right so verse 22 i'm gonna to have to get close to see the numbers i can see the, the letters fine um then a demon possessed man who was blind and mute was brought to jesus and he healed him so that the mute both saw and spoke all the people wondered in amazement and said could this be the son of david the messiah I'm reading from the Amplified Version, by the way. But the Pharisees heard it and said, this man cast out demons with the help of Beelzebub, which is their way of saying Satan, um, the prince of demons. Mm -hmm. Next verse, knowing their thoughts. And I want to stop right there. Um, that means that they didn't say it to him out loud. They didn't say it in a way that he could hear it, but he knew what they were thinking. He knew how their heart was going. Maybe he did hear them. I don't know, but it said knowing their thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, so they watched the Lord do a miracle. A man is blind. You don't see that in the church that much anymore, if, if at all. I haven't seen it in my lifetime. Um, and deaf, mute. And yet he now sees and he now speaks. Mm -hmm. um, power of speech to somebody who never, who, who, who's um, mute, to just start speaking is a huge miracle. That's not, okay, he couldn't talk and now he can talk. And I think people who can talk kind of make that mistake. But the, the ability to form words, to, 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 to know how they sound, the phonetics of them, to just begin talking when you never talked, 
you know, I've seen people receive their healing in their legs, but they've been confined, say, to a wheelchair so long that there's atrophy in the muscles. There's, you know, you have to now begin to develop the legs again so they can walk, unless they have a kind of super supernatural miracle where all the muscles in their legs just jump back in and they just start walking. But a lot of times, you know, you see their stories where Jesus said they were healed immediately, but then you see the other stories, you, know, you said that as they went, they were healed. And then you see other stories where they were instantaneously healed. And of course, that's according to your faith, be it unto you. And it doesn't make one person worse than the other, but it does show that there are degrees of healings and miracles that take place in the Bible. Well, this one is big because man was mute and he couldn't see, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he can talk now. Now he can talk, and he and he's speaking. And they actually get into a debate of where that healing possibly came from. He maybe he is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Now we think it's he's working with demons to heal. The, the the interesting thing is when you see a miracle of God or a move of God, why is there a debate? Why do we debate where it possibly came from? I bring that up as a point because I get very concerned that the church identifies the work of the devil when stuff go wrong without any question. They immediately say the enemy and then they'll say a lot of times, but God allowed it. So they'll put mm -hmm. Satan and God in league with each other, like like somehow they work together, they're co-workers. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Stupid stuff that the church people say. But immediately they identify evil as evil. But when you see the move of God, you can't determine. You have to question it. You're not sure. Was it God or was it not God? Um, it's sad that at this point in time in a lot of our walks, we still can't discern what's God and what's not God in our lives. And and I'm not saying that to pick on you. I'm talking about even myself. Sometimes I'm not clear. Um, I have to stop and say, God, is this you? Now, I'm not discouraging every, anyone from doing that. You should always check and find out for sure if you're hearing from the Father. But it's at some point that you have, should have a confirmation enough to say, I've heard and I'm going to go and I'm going to trust. Um, there are people who procrastinate on their hearing of what's God and what's not so long that they miss the opportunity to see the move of God or they never move into it because they're always looking for a confirmation. Um, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign and that should be given them to them saying that of the prophet Jonas. I mean, you're going to wind up in a whale's belly for three days if you keep playing around and not step out on what God has called you to. But that's beside the point. They went on questioning, could it be God or could it not be God? And the religious people... The Pharisees were the quicker ones to say it's the devil. They immediately gave glory to the devil. I want to make sure you understand my words when I say this. They immediately gave glory to the devil for the work of God. They immediately gave glory to the devil. Whenever there's a move of, of anything in your life and you immediately begin to glorify the enemy for it, you begin to identify who you relate to as the answer to your prayers. Mm -hmm. um, you begin to show that this is who I expect to move when I call. I've heard church people say a million times, you know, you got to be careful because when God moves, the devil always shows up. Why is that an expectation? I don't usually hear church people, the, the devil's people say, don't worry. When the devil moves, God's mm -hmm. going to be there. Church people don't even say that. You know, when the devil moves, you know, God's going to show right up. But they're confident. They're so confident in the devil showing up and less confident in God showing up. And again, what I'm trying to point out today is allegiance. Who are you in allegiance to? Because I don't expect the devil. I expect God. I don't look for the enemy. I look for God. And if stuff is going any kind of way, I'm not looking to see what the enemy's doing. I'm looking for my father. Maybe I'm make, helping you identify who your real father might be. Just a thought. Um, may not like that, but I don't care. Um, Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said to them, any kingdom divided against itself is being laid to waste and no city or house divided against itself will continue to stand. Um, here's a point. So I'm talking about the church now, I'm talking about the power of Christ, but I'm talking about the church. He just said, no house divided amongst amongst itself can stand. That's most of the churches I've ever been to. And sometimes I've even seen it in my home. 
um, divided against himself, fighting against himself, strife against him, against himself, this click against that click, and they wonder why you don't see the real power of God in the house, because the house divided can't stand. They're not unified. They don't grow together. I, there's times I can say, okay, we need to stand and do this, and, and I know who's going to show up and who's not. I know who's going to stand and who's not, and um, I know who's going to say they agree but not show any agreement. They'll say they have faith, but their works, you know, faith without works is dead. But by their works, the works will show that they're not in agreement. So, mm -hmm. you know, well, this came up. Well, I had to go here. Well, this 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 party happened or whatever. And immediately people become divided when they when it comes to show real allegiance. I, I, I made a joke, you know, um, when last week's service, when I looked on TV and saw all these churches before the law was passed empty, and I said, well, Lord, I don't have a really big church and you never really given me a big church and you told me you never would. And I said, you know, it's really interesting that when the scare hit, the reality was nobody's big church was as big as I. We were all about the same size because nobody showed up. And again, I'm not trying to shame anybody, but I am mm -hmm. trying to like turn the alarm on. Um, what's happening right now, I don't want to go deep into it, but to me it's concerning because you know all this church and state law separation thing, we were, it's been proven that if we come up with a good enough reason, we can throw that out the window. So all of you who are depending on the laws of the land to protect you, uh, yeah, not so. And that's why when the new world order comes, the enemy's gonna run right over your church and state because none of those things have no weight. Your allegiance really needs to be to the kingdom of God because that's the only place you're gonna get protection. Don't pretend on the nation's laws to protect you. You need to pretend on God's laws to protect you. you protect you. You're in this world, but not of it. You're ambassadors, you're visitors. Mm -hmm. This is not your place of protection or your place of origins or your place of supply. You're supposed to be a temporary resident here doing a work and then returning mm -hmm. to a kingdom. And as long as you think that the laws that govern the world and what party is in office, whatever political party is in office, is your protection, you're a fool because this is not your protection. This world is not your protection. Mm -hmm. You don't seek protection from this world. Our protection is in the Lord. Our hope is in the Lord. When these things happen, he said, look to the hills from whence comes your help. I won't stay long on that. I'll keep going. He said, a house divided amongst itself cannot stand. Um, and, oh, and he said, we'll be laid to waste. Let me quote it right. Any kingdom that is divided against itself will be laid waste. And any city or house divided itself will not continue to stand. So, Looking at my house, looking at the house, the church, looking at any place where there's no unity and that's not really pushed in the church. OK, let's not be divided. Let's stand together. That's not a big thing in the church. Everybody's about themselves. It's, it's not a big thing. You go to church, and you find there's a selected few, a small group that really hold it down for mostly everybody else. Um, a house divided. Um, can't stand. I think that we need to at this time really pay close attention to the love of Christ that's in our house. And you know my disciples by the love they have for one another and how well we stand together, how low well we band together. And I don't think that that's even a, a, a message that I remember hearing in all of my years of ministry preached with any fervor and continuation. You know, you will touch on it here and we'll touch on it there. But the fact is, we need to be unified more than ever right now. The fact that it says if two or more are gathered in, in my name, I'll be in the midst of them. And they've said, no, you can't gather. I, 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 I read into that kind of stuff the way I do. Call me what you want to call me, but I read into that. You know, the, 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 you lay hands on the sick and they should recover. No, you can't even gather to lay hands on nobody. It, it, it's concerning. But at the same time, I'm not mad at them. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because a lot of that's not really happening in church anymore. You know, it's entertainment. You go there to hear the choir, to see how it is, to see if you can get in the choir or whatever. You know, it's, it's, it's about how many members you got and how, you know, how much of a, how much of a spe spectacular show you can put on in a lot of places. Not all places, but in a lot of places. And, you know, the, I remember when I used to watch TV when I was younger and see these preachers on it, even though I wasn't a believer and, and thought it was all a joke. I saw the healing lines. I saw the prayer lines. I saw the move of God, you know, on these shows. It, that's not the case anymore. It's a, it's a gathering. It's a, it's a, it's a get together. 
And yes, you should have fellowship, but the power of God should not be forsaken. And then what Jesus is doing here is he's showing the power of God and he's being criticized for it. He's being criticized. He's being called out of his name. He's being he's saying he's being used by devils to do the work of God. So Jesus goes on to say, if Satan cast out Satan, mm -hmm. Amplify says that is his own demons, he has become divided against himself and disunited. How then will the kingdom of how then will his kingdom stand? If I cast out demons by the help of Satan, by whom are your sons then casting out demons? For this reason, they will be judged. But if it is by the spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. So, Jesus makes a point. If Satan's kingdom is divided against itself, which it is, it's going to be disunited. If the church is divided against itself, it's still disunited. It's powerless. You're canceling out your own power. You're canceling out your own abilities by arguing denomination, by arguing whatever you want to argue. You know, I've had people get into big arguments with me from church and they want to talk to me about gay this and, and straight that and everybody needs to be saved. And I'm like, save your own church first. How united are you in your own house? What's your agenda? What are you really talking about in your house that has to do with kingdom building, not church building? And this, this I, I, I can't stress this hard enough. You know, it's not about church building. It's about kingdom building. What are you doing to touch and reach and change lives and touch souls? Not how many, you know, I, I've come from the church. I come from that background. And again, not against prosperity, but I've been in churches where we were being taught every week how to prosper, you know, how, how to sow a seed and get more money and how to, to grow and succeed in our own life. And yes, God has prospered my efforts after I stopped seeking them. And I stopped pursuing prosperity and just began to pursue what he's called me to. God prosper me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God's righteousness and then let things be added. Um, but I've sat there and I've not ever learned how to build the kingdom, mm -hmm. how to save souls, how to minister to people. How often do you pray for this government? How often do you pray for the world? When you pray against this uh, corona, do you pray that you don't get it or do you pray for the world to be saved. And I'm seeing a lot of stuff online. It's coming from 5G radio, radio waves, and it's this government is putting it in us. And I'm like, hey, I'm not here to debate if you're right or wrong on that. I'm saying, though, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Mm -hmm. Why is the focus on those things? Here, he's saying, if God, by the power of God, I'm casting out demons then the kingdom of God has come to you. And this is where I want to kind of bring it home. He did cast out spirits by the demon spirits by the spirit of God. And Jesus has come. And for most of us, we know him as our savior. And if that be the case, then the kingdom of God has come, not just come, but he said, it has come upon you. Mm. But, if it is by the spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Stop praying for the kingdom of God to come upon you. It has. The question is now, what do you do with it? What are you going to do with it? Because the power is there. We are overly indoctrinated with the news. Um, I'm going to read one more verse, but let me just say this. We are over indoctrinated, the church, with the news that we can't even hear the power anymore or relate to the power um <clears throat> i'll try to make light of stuff but you know i've been around long enough um 61 years to have seen a lot of things and um i remember the y2k virus and i remember how first of all i didn't understand how it was a virus i kept saying it's not a virus and they're talking about it in 1996 1997 1998 1999 they're building it up and building up and people are buying toilet paper 
I don't know what toilet paper have to do with a computer virus. I don't know if the computer got diarrhea, but <laughs> whatever the case may be, they start stocking up toilet paper and coffee because it was going to be a commodity and your bank accounts were going to go to zero. And um, people were buying up guns and putting barbed wire around their house like the zombie apocalypse was going to come. And, you know, this, the whole world and the news talked about it and everybody and a couple of pastors talked about prepare yourself. And I prayed about it and God said, no, no. And then I was working in the computer field as a network engineer at the point, and I knew that it was it was cock and made a lot of money off of it. But the point was, nothing happened. The fear was there, then the fear was gone, and life went on. Mm. And, and, and from that point on, I, get, I went, okay, so what's the, what's the, how does this end? Does it end with us running around waiting for them to tell us it's over? Or do we decide it's over because we have the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God has come unto you? Mm -hmm. I'm talking to those of you who believe, those of you who don't do what you need to do. But those of you who claim to believe or do believe, then if the kingdom of God has come to you, then your response to this should be, I'm greater than this. And I, have a, and I have a protection from this. And I'm not running around with cloth mask on my face and all that stuff. Again, I'm not dissing anybody who does. Do what you need to do. You, I'm not telling you to have my faith. I'm telling you to have your faith, whatever that is. So he went on to say, once again, but if, but, if the, but, if, but if it is by the spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. It has come upon you, church. Mm -hmm. Or how can anyone go into a strong man's house and steal his property unless he first overpowers and ties up the strong man? Then he will ransack and rob his house. So what he's saying is the, 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 whoever you deem the strong man, and that be the enemy right now, the devil, this disease, the sickness, this whatever this case may be, how can you render it harmless unless you bind a strong man? Um, I'm going to say some stuff here that, that might be just really, really close for some people. But again, oh, well. Um, so you come up with a, a cure for this this virus, right? You know, I've seen the name um, of this virus on the Lysol cans for, for a long, long time. So it's been around a while, um, a long time. If you're not, if you don't believe me, go look in your house, see if you have an old can of Lysol and mm -hmm. see if you don't find the name of that virus on it. It's been around for a long time. So the answer is, but it's a different strand. Okay. Hmm. Same disease, new name. Okay. Or new, same disease, new, new, new strand. Okay. Fine. So you're running and you're hiding, you're ducking in fear and you're, you're, you're scared to go out and you're not going to pray for nobody. You're not going to get next. And by the way, yesterday they said we can't have church by law, but they said we could have food pantry. So we were open yesterday and we did distribute food to, to the, every family who came online to get food. And so, again, and no, I did not have on a mask. Again, I stand for the Lord. And if, 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 if my standing is wrong, then I'll die in it. And I'm good with that. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I'm willing to die for what I believe. That's me not telling you what to do. Um, I, my concern is we're going to look to government. They're going to give us a vaccine. Everybody's going to run and take this needle that they've been avoiding because they don't want to take it anyway. You know, the flu virus that all you've been ducking, you're all ready to take it now, right? Yeah, because now you're scared because they tell you it's going to kill you. So now you're going to go take that flu shot that you wouldn't take now, right? Okay, and you're going to take it. And mm -hmm. fine. And all of a sudden it's going to be gone. But if another strand could come five days later, a month later, a year later, you're right back to square one. You're right back where you started. So if you're trusting in man, you're not very bright because man can't cure you. He was wounded for our transgressions. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, we were healed and made whole. I'm not trying to be healed. I'm healed. I used to hear, I'm trying to remember who used to say this. We're not the, the sick that God's trying to heal. We're the healed that the devil's trying to make sick. I refuse to accept that as my destiny, that I have to depend on man to tell me I'm well, 
I'm healed, I'm safe, I'm covered, I'm protected, I'm in good care now, it's all right, we did the job and we made you okay. No, you did not. Christ did that for me years and years and years before you even were thought about. So here's what I'm saying to you. You can't take a strong man unless you're willing to bind his house. Mm -hmm. But what you have to understand about that statement is very serious because that means you have to be willing to go up in that strong man's house and face him. Mm. You can't bind a strong man unless you're willing to face the strong man. And you got to feel strong enough to face the strong man to go bind the strong man. And the average Christian ain't trying to face nobody. They trying to stay away, duck and hide, duck and cover. You know, where's the cupboard that I can crawl into? They're not trying to stare down no spirit or they're not trying to face the enemy on any level. And so the enemy is running rip shop over the church. The church has no backbone now. So I'm saying. Jesus said it, but if I, it, but if it's, but if it is by the spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. The kingdom of God has come upon you. And the works that I do, you should do also, Jesus said, and greater works than he shall you do because I go unto the Father. Please don't live in fear. Please don't walk around like somebody whipped and beaten. Um, I think it's in, uh, it's in Ecclesiastes. It's a sore evil I've seen in the world. Princess walking like slaves and slaves riding horses like princess, like princess and princesses. Um, we have the victory. We have the authority. The kingdom is ours. Thank you for your time. If you have not accepted Christ as Lord, Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you should be saved. It's a simple process. It's not about what church you join or how often you go to church. But you should have a place to fellowship and you should have a place that teaches you the word. And hopefully not a place that just entertains you with good bands and good music and good choirs, but a place that teaches you a word that you can step out in this world and win with. And I know people don't want that nowadays in church. They want entertainment a lot. And I respect. I, as long as you go to church, I'm happy for you. Just go somewhere. It's better than nothing. But at times like this, it's when you find out what you really know and what you really believe, isn't it? So just say this, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I turn from my past. I court, according to the word, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, I accept you as my Savior, my Savior and Lord. I believe you died for my sins. I believe that you rose on the third day. I believe you do sit out of the hand of power and majesty. And I do believe that now I'm a citizen of heaven. And I do, do believe that I'm covered by the covering of heaven itself. And I believe that since you cast out demons by this Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, that the kingdom of God has come unto me. And I accept that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And any tongue that rises against me will be proven wrong. Mm -hmm. These are the days and times where very few people are going to step up and say these kind of things. And I may come under some kind of fire about it, but, you know, at this stage of life, like, who cares, right? Um, I just want you to be strong. I want you to be safe. And I want you to walk in the power that God has called you to walk into. I want you to be blessed. I love you. God loves you. So bye for me. Bye. Now remember, the word that you heard brings God's blessings to you. Look at you. <laughs> bye. Bye.